Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be doing another peer review where we're looking at a viewer submission where they've created a project but they've got themselves stuck. With today's submission we have this which is a cyclone attachment to a vacuum cleaner. So this will sit on top, I'm not sure which way around it goes, I think it might go around this way and it pulls dust into the vacuum cleaner. The trouble that we've got is that we need to remove this material from in here so this hole should go all the way through. The original submission says I have designed a cyclone to attach to a vacuum but I don't know how to make a hole to the spiral. Please make a video to help me. So we're going to be looking at this object, breaking down what's done and then trying to solve the problem what the viewer has. So let's take a look at this object and see what we can do. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So before we start we're going to have a look at the tree. It's in the part design workflow. Starting with a body and then moving down all the way down to the last action which is the additive loft. We know this is the last action because it's the last one in the list. And also we have this tip icon here. With anything like this, we work backwards. So we first hide the additive loft and look at the previous action or operation in the list, which is basically just a circular pad with a sketch. So the viewer has taken the sketch, padded it, and then added an additive loft with profiles. So if I press the space bar on these profiles, we can see the profiles appear like so. And they've been positioned around this object. Now if you think about it with the additive loft, this one has two walls. So you can see the outer and inner wall. And you see this in the sketch. Now this is actually quite easy to solve. It just requires a second action in there or a second operation. You may be thinking, well, if we take the additive loft, then we can get to, say, in here and make a shape binder or a subshape binder. But when we look at both sides, taking those, so creating two binders and pressing the space bar, you can see that the shapes, the kidney shapes, are out of line with each other. So if I create a pocket with these, then there wouldn't be a smooth transition across there. We could try creating a loft but there's no need to do that. Let's go back to those binders and just delete them and bring back the additive loft. So we've got the additive loft that goes through the pad. Now, if we go back to the additive loft and I'm just going to delete that by pressing the delete key, we get the sketches. So we've released the sketches from that loft. The idea is, is to make two operations. We make an additive that passes through here, then we make a subtractive loft that removes the material, including what's needed from the pad. To do that, this loft has to be solid. So what I'm going to do is just hold down the shift and highlight all those sketches. I'm going to come up to edit and duplicate selected items. Let's get rid of the planes because we don't need those. We don't need the pad and we're just going to need the sketches in there and hit OK. Let's create a duplicate of all those sketches. And for some reason, we've got sketch seven last here. That's OK, so that's visible. So we've got eight, nine, ten, and six. And here we've got one, two, three, four, and five. As you hover over them, you can see them highlight. That one seems to become visible. I think it's just confusing the matter. So we've got these here. So we've got the top ones, which I'm going to double click on and remove the inner part of the sketch. So hit close. And this one, we can see that inner part there. So this will not leave a void in between. And this is what we want. So this is going to be the additive. And go to this one. And you can see that inner circle we delete, so we're deleting the inner geometry. 
and five, which is gonna be all the inner parts here. Delete those. And close. We may need to add back any constraints in there. So we've got those now. What I'm going to do is highlight them and press the space bar and bring back the copies. So these ones here. Now with these, I'm gonna go through them. Start from here. And this time, I'm gonna delete the outer. So the inner geometry went on the other ones and the outer geometry is being removed from these. So we're creating a set of inner and outer sketches. Now we've got another line in here somewhere, where is it? I may have to come in and use the section view, sketch view section, there it is. Again, remember we've got constraints in here which we may have to link back up. Deleting the outer and leaving the inner. I think that's it. So if we look at all the others and bring them back. So these are all the outer sketches. So you can see those coming back in. We've separated off the outer and inner layers. So I'm gonna hide all the inner layers. Let's just hide the pad first so we can see those. And this is where it's worth checking them. Control click in all the inners. It's a bit hard to see. There's quite a lot going on. There we go, all the inners have been selected. Let's press the space bar on that. So we just got the outers bring back that pad. Now what I'm going to do is use the additive loft and select our first sketch, which is gonna be this one, and then add section. And moving our way along, picking up all the profiles, for the outer part, Hit OK. There's our first loft through there. And now what we do is we use the reverse of this one. So we this is the additive. And this one is the subtractive. And they're available from part design. Create additive features. You've got additive loft and create subtractive features. Subtractive loft. Now this can get a bit tricky because this additive loft is going to block what we see on screen. Let's bring back the sketches and press the space bar to show those in there. First, we need our first sketch. So I'm gonna select our first sketch, which in this case is sketch 10. Part design, create a subtractive feature, subtractive loft. Now we can add the sections. We can see the object has been added, sketch 010, which is this one, but we can't get to any of the sections in here Let's click Add Section and come up to Model. Now, if we hover over these, we can see the sections within. So you can see those individual sketches. So rather than adding from the screen, we actually start adding from the tree view. So let's find our first section. So you can see on the right, it's highlighted. And that's sketch nine. So click that, you can see it's gone red. Now we're looking for our next section. So roll over these until we find our next section, which is sketch eight. But we need to come in, add section, and then click on sketch eight. You can see that if we expand this out, we got the sketches added. Add section, come back to the model, and look at sketch seven, rolling over it, you can see it on the right. Click on that and finally add section and use sketch six. Everything has gone red. Come out to task and hit okay. We've created a subtractive loft through there and you can see 
we have got a hole going all the way through there and through this pad. And if I hover over the subtractive loft, you can see how that's gone through there. Let's click on that and look at the view. Actually, we need to click on the body and I'm going to add some transparency so we can see through. Let's go to 80 on the transparency. And you can see how that's gone all the way through there. So that's how to create that complex structure all the way through. It's just a case of breaking it down into another operation using an additive and a subtractive operation in there. Remember when we come in and look at additive loft and look at the profiles, we've got the outside sections that would create a solid fruit like so. You can see the solid in there. And then with extractive loft, we look at those. Pressing the space bar, you can see we've got the inside sections, which we use as a subtractive feature to go all the way through there. Let's hide those. And it creates our object. So I hope that's helped in understanding how to create that object and how to use the subtractive loft and the additive loft together to make such models as this. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.